Good morning. Hello, everyone. Last week, we looked at the Ignatian principle and foundation, where it is about not deciding beforehand what is good, what is bad, whether it's a long life, a short life, riches or poverty, health or sickness. In other words, not deciding that I will only be happy should X, Y, and Z happen. Mm, so not sold out on any specific outcome in my life. Yes. To, to give me meaning. Because those things are normally not the things that give us real intrinsic meaning in our life. Mm. Or, or really um, help us uh, in our relationship with God. Mm. They mm. are the things that we focus on in terms of what looks like a good life. Yes. In, in, in terms of what we might, we might decide that it's more um, uh, holy to be poor mm. than to be rich. So it can be, but not to have those definitions that we are so sold out on that if something happens in our life uh, that doesn't um, line up with this, this idea of our, what our lives should, should look like, it throws us off completely. Yes. So uh, the image that uh, St. Ignatius used is that of a balance, mm. a little scale, a balance mm. uh, that is steady, mm. in, right in, in the balance, in balance uh, not tipping over to either side. Mm. Uh, and that is, uh, it is actually a, a Big thing, uh, because I think we are we we actually live with certain ideas, certain mm. uh, ideas of what God's grace is like. Um, so we'll say, "I've been blessed by God," and then you 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 mention all these really good things in your life, because that to us um, is blessing. Mm. But then, what do we do with God and our image of God when something really difficult happens in our life. Mm. Have, have we not been blessed? Has God, God uh, you know, we, we think of uh, punishment, we think of uh, God not being, forsaking you know, us. Forsaking us. Uh, so we get into big um, um, theological yes, problems. Conflict, uh, inner conflict, when we are so sold out on one definition of what God's grace is. Yeah. And we end up with a, with a poor spirituality or a meager spirituality mm. because it's a spirituality that can't handle life in its full colors and nuances mm. and shades. In the full spectrum from what we perceive to be really wonderful to what we perceive to be really terrible. Yes. So if we tend to lean too strongly to only the good, only the enjoyable, only uh, the, the prosperous, then... What do we do with the rest? What do we do with the rest? Yeah. Um, and how do we... What is our stance towards people who are not in such a situation mm. because we can become uh, almost condescending mm. we come from our position of being blessed to those who for some reason you know, like job's friends yes you must have done something really exactly bad. yeah and it's so easy to just go into that mindset um and it might be that you made a choice that had a consequence that, mm. that really caused you a lot of difficulty. And, 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 but even then, if we say God in everything, if we see God in everything, then we have to see God in the whole spectrum of life. Yeah. And I think we struggle with that because we, we don't know how to look for God. I think when you really, in your own life, when you're going through a very difficult time, having to discern, make big choices, or just a real big trauma happening in your life, we often don't experience God in that because such a lot changes in us that 
the vocabulary and the 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 the, the eyes that we were looking the way we were seeing God with, the image mm, that we had mm, of God, mm. completely changes. Yeah. Uh, there's such a lot of things happening and we actually need a new vocabulary. We need to put on new glasses uh, because God comes to us in a form that we don't recognize. Exactly. Yes. But that is, in that is for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And in that sense, it is so important to have a practice that can help you to tap into the silent, deeper dimensions of God. Mm, mm. A practice that brings you in touch with a big story that is constantly unfolding, the good and the bad, um, the joy and the heartache. And when we become quiet and when we enter into the silence, that is such a, a, a rich arena to enter into mm. and have that experience. It's, it's almost, I, I often feel when I'm doing uh, my quiet times that you enter into almost a neutral place, almost that mm. balance, that place in balance mm. where, where even if it's, it's a very difficult day or... You, you can enter into that deep place where um, God is there and, and the circumstances is not the, the defining um, things in your life. Yeah, yeah. It makes a big difference. Yeah, and also to have somebody to talk to. Uh, somebody who has lived through difficult things. Mm. Because I think in a lot of ways it's a lonely journey. If, if we are, uh, in general, exposed to people who see God's blessings and God's presence only in the good, when we go through very difficult periods, it is often difficult to, within such a group, to share what we are experiencing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and it's often um, that... The, the only people that can really understand is those people that have gone through the same experiences. Yes. And you often see that if you lost a, a child, um, the people that really truly understand are people mm. that has lost a child. Um, mm. uh, um, someone that struggled with cancer, they, they, they have, uh, you, you, you actually experience them as, as having gone through the mill and they came out on the other side um, uh, more expansive, more able to to hold a space for you in, in circumstances that they know so well. Mm. So there is that wisdom and that um, lived experience of, of, of the difficult. Mm. But actually, if they most probably, even in my own life, if I have to look back, on uh, times that was really difficult, I can now say it, there has been gift in that. Yes. It, has, I've, it, it brought me to a better place in myself, in my relationships with God, um, and it was because of that, those difficult times. Mm, yeah, because from own experience, yeah. we know uh, the fruit coming out yeah, of that. Yeah. It, it, it has been... A period, it, it, it was uh, some of the most difficult uh, times of, of our lives. Uh, those were those experiences. Um, but also the richest times. Mm. Um, and I think somebody that for us is such a mentor in that regard is James Finley. Yes, somebody with a lived spirituality and a wisdom mm. because also people having gone through the mall there's a wisdom there yes there's not only knowledge a sharing a very humble wisdom mm. it's, it's a lived wisdom yeah it's not head knowledge no it comes from a different place yeah yeah and james finley we discovered we weren't familiar with james finley um, until a number of years ago when we went to the living school 
and he was one of the core faculty members along with Richard Ruhr and Cynthia Bougeau. And initially, we couldn't understand a word of what <laughs> Jim was saying. Uh, we knew he was, he was actually speaking English, but it was <laughs> way too mystical for us. <laughs> it was really. Oh, and boy. then by the end of the two years of the living school, you drank every word yeah, from his lips. Yeah, you got steeped in that. It is just um, wonderful. Because something of what he was telling and sharing, it came through. And you realized that this is truth. Yeah. And this, is, this, this has deep, deep meaning. Mm. Also because it is lived spirituality. Um, there's a saying when you were talking about uh, people living through that, I was thinking often people in AA programs, yes. Alcoholics Anonymous, those people understand something of that. Yeah. Um, and within the AA, there's a saying religion is for people who are afraid of hell, spirituality is for people who's, who've been there. Mm -hmm. um, and when you listen to James Finley, you, you listen to somebody who has gone through hell. Mm. Childhood abuse constantly mm. in a very abusive household. And then leaving uh, how the, uh, his home just uh, after school. Um, and then as a young adult suffering abuse again. Mm. And having to work through that, ending up being a clinical psychologist, uh, focusing on trauma. Um, and then Jim comes and... And this is from his memoir that he's just written. Yeah. Uh, which is wonderful. Um, the Healing Path, uh, a memoir and an invitation. And the second sentence of this memoir reads as follows, or the uh, second and the third. The surprising thing is that the intimate healing that spirituality brings into our lives is often hidden in the muck and mire of the very things about ourselves we wish were not true. The secret opening through which we pass into wholeness is hidden in the center of those wounds we are most afraid to approach. Mm. Not easy. The things we wish were not true. I wish I didn't struggle with alcohol. Mm. I wish I didn't embezzle money. Yeah, or hurt somebody. I wish I, I was more loving towards my children when they grew up. But I was so focused on my career that I've missed out. Mm. Such a lot of things that we wish were not true. But they are. Mm. And when God is in all things, that's where the intimate healing takes place, say, uh, says Jim. And the secret opening through which we pass into wholeness is hidden in the center of those wounds we are most afraid to approach. Yeah, so we so we actually bury them. Yes. We bury those very, very difficult things that happened in our lives. Um, and like you always say, when you bury your emotions... You bury them alive. You bury them alive. And they pop up all over the place. I think that's the muck and the mire. Yeah. They just... Something triggers you and you fly off mm. um, and you, you look back and you say, what happened here? What, mm. what, why did I have this response? And mm. you feel guilty and you feel terrible and worthless. And, and I think the problem then is if we get stuck in those feelings of, mm. of what happened in, this, in, in our life. Mm. Um, I'm, what I'm saying is the, the where, where you were triggered mm. because there's a deeper wound that you're not mm. that you're not healed from 
is that we get so stuck in the guilt feelings and the the worth feelings of worthlessness that we just stay there. Yes. But if we could get a get a step back and look at it, like I think God looks at us, mm. and 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 we we try to take the cue and say, but why this response to maybe something that really didn't uh, didn't ask for such a response, mm. and then take the cue and and go back and look for that place where the where the emotion lies buried alive. Mm. Mm. And mm. it's difficult. I think in psychology, in, in, in uh, working with the psychology, that's part of that very difficult path is to go to those mm. places. It might require that we go for therapy mm. if it's really difficult. Mm. Or you see a spiritual director who gently guides you also in this. And who will also tell you if you need yes. uh, psychiatric or psychological Psychological, Psychological. Help. <laughs> yes, um, and and also to discover how God very gently in this whole process is busy with us, mm. guiding us towards this wholeness and this healing. He doesn't abandon us, uh, but is present in that. Um, such a rich theme. Probably we'll return to that in future as well. Um, if there's any feedback, we appreciate that. It's all, always so interesting and wonderful to hear from you as well. Uh, but in the meantime, keep well this week and we'll talk again next week. Goodbye, everyone.